We're getting close to another checkup. Page 24 and 25 on the fourth algebra pace, 1100. Uh, this is recognizing another special pattern, and we did a little bit of this type in the early, earlier in the pace where we had something like x plus 3, the quantity squared, and we multiply out x plus 3 times itself. Now let's remember the FOIL method would give us x squared plus, let's see if we can do this a little bit faster in our head, the outer is 3x and the inner is 3x, so I would get 6x because I'm adding like terms, and then 3 plus times 3 is 9. So notice a pattern here, the, if I wanted to go figure out, well what is this quantity squared, if this middle term well, first of all, it's going to be the square root of this, right? And the square root of this is 3. So x here and 3 here. Now, what is 3 times 2? And if that, if you take the, the numbers here times 2 and you get this. So x times the 3, 3 times x times 2, okay? And that gives you the middle term then it is a perfect, um, perfect square, so x plus 3 squared. So we can go from this and jump right to here, okay? So what they're going to have us do here is identify what should this middle term P be so that I could get a plus 4, the quantity squared. All right, now you could do it all out longhand and multiply x a plus 4 times a plus 4. But the shortcut that they keep trying to emphasize here on these pages is if we take the 4 times a, which is 4a, times 2, that would give us this middle term of 8a. And then that would be the perfect, um, this, the addition here, a plus 4, that quantity squared. Well, let's see what we would do here. What is half, excuse me, the square root of 4x squared? If I was going to come up with a quantity squared, the first term would have to be 2x. The square root of this, what's the square root of 9? Okay, put that in here. Now follow the steps here. It's real simple. Multiply these two together. 3 times 2x is 6x, but you double it. So what's 6x doubled? And that would be 12x. So since that works, 2x times 3 doubled, and I get that, then this can be factored to be 2x plus 3, the quantity squared. It works even for a more complicated expression like this. So what do you think the first term, if I'm trying to factor this, the first term would be the square root of this. So obviously the square root of 9 is 3. I do b, what's the square root of 36? 6, okay. Um, now, notice I have a minus here. That's a little different. Hmm. But let's see what happens here. What is 6 times 3? Okay, you get 18, and then we're going to double that. And so we get 36. So 36, and we'll keep the B in there. And now we do a minus here in the middle. Now let's just check that one because that one looks a little odd. So let's do 3b minus 6 times 3b minus 6. And if we do the FOIL method, what do we get? 3b times 3b, that's 9b squared. Okay, we're good there. At the end, we get negative 6 times negative 6, positive 36. We're good there. Let's check the middle term. Negative 6 times 3b would be negative 18b. And then in the middle, we have negative 18b. Negative 18b plus negative 18b is indeed negative 36b. All right? <clears throat> We're trying to figure out what the middle term would be here, but to do that, we need to figure out what the two square root terms are. Square root of 49, 7. Square root of 89, 9x. And this is plus, so this will be plus. And now we're going to take these two, multiply, I mean, yeah, multiply them together, all right? And then double that. 
times 2, and that will give you the middle term. All right, I'm not going to do that one for you. It uh, looks complicated, but it's, again, it's just following the pattern. Multiply these two together and double it, and that becomes your middle term. So a lot of um, what they're covering at this point is just trying to get you to recognize some patterns so that some of these you could try to do in your head and do a little faster. All right, we'll move on to another lesson uh, in just a little bit.